This is the living room of the house occupied by the eminent professor Michael Varus Evans and his wife, Mrs. Petunia Evans Varus, and their adopted son, Harry James Potter Evans Varus. There is a letter lying on the living room table and an unstamped envelope of yellowish parchment addressed to Mr. H. Potter in emerald green ink. You're joking! My sister was a witch. Her husband was a wizard. Dear, I understand that you're not familiar with the skeptical literature. You may not realize how easy it is for a trained magician to fake the seemingly impossible. Remember how I taught Harry how to bend spoons? Listen, Michael, I wasn't always like this. Lily had always been prettier than me, and I'd been mean to her because of that. And then she got magic. Can you imagine how I felt? And when I had just graduated, I was going out with this boy, Vernon Dursley. He was fat, and he was the only boy who would talk to me in college. And he said he wanted children, and that his first son would be named Dudley. And I thought to myself, what kind of parent names their child Dudley Dursley? It was like I saw my whole future life stretching out in front of me, and I couldn't stand it. And I wrote my sister, and I begged her to use some of that magic on me, so that I could be pretty too. She gave in. And I drank this potion, and I was sick for weeks. But when I got better, my skin cleared up, and I finally filled out, and... I was beautiful. And after that I couldn't hate my sister anymore, especially when I learned what her magic brought her in the end. Darling, you got sick, you gained some weight while resting in bed, and your skin cleared up on its own. My love, I know I can't win arguments with you, but please, you have to trust me on this. She was a witch. Dad! Mom! The two of them stopped and looked at Harry as though they'd forgotten there was a third person in the room. Mom, no one in your family knew about magic when Lily got her letter, did they? How did they get convinced? They didn't just send a letter. They sent a professor from Hogwarts. He... he showed us some magic. Then you don't have to fight over this. If it's true, we can just get a Hogwarts professor here and see the magic for ourselves. And Dad will admit that it's true. And if not, then Mum will admit that it's false. That's what the experimental method is for. The professor turned and looked down at him, dismissive as usual. Oh, come now, Harry. Really? Magic? I thought you'd know better than to take that seriously, son, even if you're only ten. Harry's mouth twisted bitterly. He was treated well. Always, Harry had been encouraged to study whatever caught his attention. He was given anything reasonable that he wanted, except, maybe, the slightest shred of respect. Mum, if you want to win this argument with Dad, look in Chapter 2 of the first book of the Feynman Lectures on Physics. The only rule of science is that the final arbiter is observation. Um, I can't think offhand of where to find something about how it's an ideal of science to settle things by experiment instead of arguments. Thank you, Harry. But I don't want to win an argument with your father. I want my husband to... to listen to his wife who loves him, and trust her just this once. Now his parents were getting into one of those arguments again. One where his mother tried to make his father feel guilty, and his father tried to make his mother feel stupid. And they went on fighting while Harry climbed the stairs to his bedroom. The funny thing was, he ought to have agreed with Dad. No one had ever seen any evidence of magic, and according to Mum, there was a whole magical world out there. How could anyone keep something like that a secret? Except that some part of Harry was utterly convinced that magic was real. Harry was finding himself just expecting that, yes, a Hogwarts professor would show up, and wave a wand, and magic would come out. The strange certainty was making no effort to guard itself against falsification. Harry gave a mental shrug to himself. A flat metal plate on a door affords pushing, and a handle on a door affords pulling, and the thing to do with a testable hypothesis is to go test it. Dear Deputy Headmistress Minerva McGonagall, or whomsoever it may concern, I recently received your letter of acceptance to Hogwarts, addressed to Mr. H. Potter. You may not be aware that my genetic parents, James Potter and Lily Potter, formerly Lily Evans, are dead. I was adopted by Lily's sister, Petunia Evans Varus, and her husband, Michael Varus Evans. I am extremely interested in attending Hogwarts, conditional on such a place actually existing. Mother mentioned that you sent a Hogwarts representative to Lily Potter, then Lily Evans, in order to demonstrate to her family that magic was real and, I presume, help Lily obtain her school materials. If you could do this for my own family, it would be extremely helpful. Sincerely, Harry James Potter Evans Varus. 
Harry added their current address, then folded up the letter and put it in an envelope, which he addressed to Hogwarts. Further consideration led him to obtain a candle and drip wax onto the flap of the envelope, into which, using a penknife's tip, he impressed the initials H-J-P-E-V. If he was going to descend into this madness, he was going to do it with style. His father was sitting in the living room and reading a book on higher math to show how smart he was, and his mother was in the kitchen preparing one of his father's favorite dishes to show how loving she was. As scary as arguments could be, not arguing was somehow much worse. Mom, I'm going to test the hypothesis. According to your theory, how do I send an owl to Hogwarts? I... I don't know. I think you just have to own a magic owl. That should have sounded highly suspicious. Oh, so there's no way to test your theory then. But the peculiar certainty in Harry seemed willing to stick its neck out even further. Well, the letter got here somehow, so I'll just wave it around outside and call Letter for Hogwarts and see if an owl picks it up. Only as Harry stumped out the back door into the backyard did it occur to him that calling out Letter to Hogwarts while holding an envelope high in the air in the middle of your own backyard was actually pretty embarrassing. No, I'm better than Dad. I will use the scientific method, even if it makes me feel stupid. Harry steeled his will and shouted into the empty sky, Letter for Hogwarts! Can I get an owl here? Harry? An old woman's face peered out, Mrs. Fig, the occasional babysitter. What are you doing, Harry? Did you get your acceptance letter from Hogwarts? Harry froze in place. Yes, I got a letter from Hogwarts. They say they want my owl by July 31st, but... But you don't have an owl. Poor dear. I can't imagine what someone must have been thinking, sending you just the standard letter. Just leave it to me, dear. And in a jiffy or two, I'll have someone over. There was a long silence in the backyard. Then a boy's voice said, calmly and quietly, What? What?